In this video, we are going to investigate the principle of lateral earth pressure at rest. If we consider a soil element in undisturbed soil, the vertical and horizontal stress components are in equilibrium. During various construction projects, we interfere with the current state of the soil, altering the natural state, whereas the horizontal stress component becomes very important. Imagine you are constructing or placing a retaining wall, trench box or any structure that needs to hold back soil. Being able to assess the magnitude of the lateral earth pressure on these structures is crucial to ensure a stable and safe design since the soil has a natural tendency to move and redistribute to ensure equilibrium. However, in these instances the structure needs to compensate for the missing soil and ensure equilibrium. The ratio between the effectual horizontal and vertical stress is called the coefficient of lateral earth pressure at rest. This is important when converting the vertical stress to the lateral earth pressure affecting the retaining structure. There are three types of lateral earth pressure which have their own earth pressure coefficient. The coefficients of active earth pressure which is used when the retaining structure moves away from the soil whereas the soil is extending and the lateral earth pressure decreases. The coefficient of passive earth pressure which is used when the retaining structure moves towards the soil whereas the soil is compressed and the lateral earth pressure increases. And the coefficient of earth pressure at rest which we will be concerned with in this video. This represents the soil's natural state of equilibrium and is present even if no structure is built. The coefficient of earth pressure at rest is used when the retaining structure is stationary and not moving relative to the soil. When determining the lateral earth pressure at rest, it is necessary to estimate the magnitude of the at rest coefficient. The theory of elasticity can be used for this, although this is associated with uncertainties and is generally avoided. The elastic solution is solely based on Poisson's ratio, which is defined as the ratio between the lateral and vertical strain. Even though this formulation of K0 generally isn't used, Poisson's effect can help to describe why the lateral earth pressure at rest differs from the vertical stress at rest. When soil is compressed vertically, it experiences lateral deformations as well due to Poisson's effect. For most soils, a Poisson's ratio of 0.3 can be assumed. Since the deformations are less in the lateral direction, the stress increase must be lower than for the vertical direction if isotropic properties are assumed. This stress redistribution is due to frictional resistance inside the soil. If the vertical load is removed again, the vertical stress will return to its original stress state. However, this is not the case for the lateral stress since the soil has been subjected to permanent deformations and the horizontal stress gets more locked in. These deformations are less prone to reverse and may result in the lateral earth pressure becoming larger than the vertical stress if the soil is unloaded sufficiently. The stress history is therefore very important. The stress history is taken into account by the overconsolidation ratio. The overconsolidation ratio is defined as the ratio between the maximum past vertical effective stress and the current vertical effective stress. Soils that have not previously experienced a larger effective vertical stress than now are referred to as normally consolidated soils. Soils that have experienced a larger effective vertical stress than now are referred to as overconsolidated. This large previously experienced stress could be due to erosion of overlying soil layers or a melting glacier. Soils can be lightly or heavily overconsolidated based on the ratio between the stresses. For normally consolidated soils, the earth pressure coefficient at rest is usually determined by the recognized Jackie formula. This is based on both analytical and experimental work. Jackie's formula is based on the effective friction angle and is valid for both sand and clay soils. Soils with a higher friction angle have a greater ability to resist shearing, which translates into a lower lateral earth pressure at rest. For overconsolidated soils, the earth pressure coefficient is usually determined by the recognized Main and Gulhawi formula. Besides the effective friction angle, this is also based on the overconsolidation ratio and a rebound parameter. 
They found that the rebound parameter should be described by a sign function to have the best fit with the test data. The more overconsolidated a soil is, the larger the at rest earth pressure is. This is because the lateral deformations are only reverted to a lesser degree when the soil is unloaded vertically, whereas the lateral stress tends to lock in. For both normally and overconsolidated soils, multiple expressions have been developed to estimate the at rest coefficient. This is because soils vary in their properties, composition, and depositional environment. Field tests can be performed to check or modify the relations for a specific project. The lateral earth pressure in soil is based on effective stress, since this represents the stress distribution within the soil particles. However, sometimes the water table is present, which reduces the effective stress. But how does water affect the retaining structure? Like the soil, the water will exert lateral pressure on the retaining structure. The stress distribution of water is hydrostatic and acts equal in all directions at a given depth. The vertical and lateral stress in water is equal due to fundamental principles in fluid mechanics and properties of liquids. The stress is determined by calculating the pore water pressure, which is discussed in a previous video. Water can be considered as having an at rest coefficient of 1. Let's take a look at a few examples. In the first scenario, we consider a normally consolidated soil behind a retaining wall where the groundwater table is located below the retaining wall, whereas the lateral water pressure is neglected. The lateral earth pressure is determined by calculating the effective vertical stress and multiplying with the at rest coefficient, which is based on the effective friction angle for the deposit. The total lateral pressure is based on the sum of the water pressure and the earth pressure. The resulting force is equal to the area of the total pressure, which can be determined by integration or utilizing geometric shapes. When considering a linear distribution, the calculations are simplified to the area of a triangle. The attack point of the force is based on the load centroid. The water table is now assumed at ground level, while the water contributes to a lateral pressure on the retaining wall. A water table at ground level is typically critical for retaining structures due to the at risk coefficient of 1. The earth pressure is based on the effective unit weight below the water table, which reduces the lateral earth pressure. The total lateral pressure resulting force and load centroid is determined similarly to the previous example. The normally consolidated soil is now assumed placed on top of an overconsolidated soil. The unit weight and friction angle of the two deposits is assumed equal. The lateral water pressure has not changed. Even though the vertical effective stress is the same as for the previous example, the lateral earth pressure differs. This is because the at rest coefficient for the lower deposit is based on an overconsolidation ratio above 1. The resulting force and load centroid is more complex for this scenario since the total stress is not triangular anymore. When dealing with nonlinear stress distributions, the shape is usually split up into simpler geometries. Each shape will then have its own load centroid. The resulting force for the whole system is determined by adding the contributions from the simple geometries. The centroid of the resulting force is determined by weighing the contribution of each of the smaller shapes. The earth and water pressure discussed in this video only accounts for the at rest situation. This means that no strains can develop since the structure and soil do not move, whereas failure cannot occur. For failure to occur, strains have to develop. The at rest scenario is therefore an ideal pre-failure scenario. If the total pressure is significant, the structure will move, whereas active and passive earth pressure should be considered. This concludes the video. The table presented shows the variables used in the video and their general unit. To support the channel, please like and subscribe.